Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, January 18. Several new measures by the police to reduce crime in 2016 take effect today. The measures were announced by Police Commissioner Dr. Carl Williams on Friday. Among them is a split of the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Operations portfolio, giving Deputy Commissioner George Quayle oversight of the newly formed territorial operations and putting DCP Clifford Blake in charge of the strategic operations portfolio. The separation into two distinct, though interconnected portfolios and the assignment of two DCPs will allow us to improve our operational effectiveness in crime prevention while ensuring greater control over discipline among the ranks. Dr. Williams says DCP Novlet Grant will retain the administration portfolio, while DCP Glenmore Hines will continue to head the crime portfolio. He also announced command changes in some areas and divisional formations. In the meantime, the police commissioner says the JCF has revamped its recruitment process to include stricter screening measures for all applicants. There will be 100% polygraphing of all prospective recruits as we seek to promote a culture of professionalism, ethics and integrity within the JCF. The police high command is also exploring new ways to ensure that the force is more reflective of the public it serves. We understand the importance of having a police service that is reflective of all segments of the population and we are currently reviewing proposals to increase our recruitment of persons from inner city and rural communities all across Jamaica. During his press statement on Friday, Commissioner Williams said the JCF would also be taking steps to shore up the weakness in its custodial systems, which resulted in the escape of 34 prisoners in seven jailbreaks last year, one more than in 2014. I have implemented several measures to reduce the possibility of such occurrences and have launched extensive investigations into each incident. Any instances of negligence or corruption will be subject to decisive action. The Ministry of Health has received a $2 million US dollar donation of pharmaceuticals from the Issa Trust Foundation and Direct Relief. The items, which were handed over at the Kingston Public Hospital on Friday, will be distributed across public health facilities island-wide. Minister of Health Horace Daly says despite doubling the drug budget from $4 to $8 billion this fiscal year, donations such as this one are critical to meet the demand. Even with that $8 billion, there are times, ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica, there are times when poor people go to the hospital and you don't have the things to give them. That is why when we have a donation like this, we welcome with an open heart and we say thank you. In the meantime, the Health Ministry has heightened its alert and scaled up its vector control activities in the wake of news that the Zika virus has been confirmed in Haiti. The Portfolio Minister Horace Daly says that given Jamaica's relationship with Haiti and other countries where the Zika virus has been confirmed, the threat of spread to Jamaica is real and imminent. So far, he says the ministry has investigated 12 suspected cases of the Zika virus and all have returned negative results on the samples. The samples were sent to the only approved confirmatory lab in the region, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARPA. They included 11 Jamaicans and one foreign national who traveled from Latin America to Jamaica. In the coming days, Minister Daly says the Health Ministry will publish the names of the communities with high levels of Aedes aegypti mosquito breeding, as the public is urged to be even more vigilant and take steps to reduce the breeding of mosquitoes. Individuals, especially pregnant women, should also protect themselves from mosquito bites by using insect repellent containing DEET, putting mesh on windows and doors, and wearing long-sleeved clothing where possible. And finally, Minister of Education Reverend Ronald Thwaites is encouraging young people to select their career choices based on the needs and opportunities in the economy. He was speaking during last week's launch of National Careers Week 2016, an initiative of his ministry, Hard Trust NTA and Junior Achievement Jamaica. We know that our economy is developing in certain ways and we know that investment is coming in certain fashions. No longer can we just educate generally, but we have to ensure that while the fundamentals are in place, we target our young people towards the areas that they are likely to be employed in and to be productive in, whether directly or indirectly. National Careers Week will be observed from February 13 to 19 under the theme Vision 2030. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching.